My name's Liz G. I'm the Associate Dean of the Fashion Business School. In our school, we know that fashion means business, and within that, we conceive that there are four pillars people, planet, profit, and purpose. But how do those four pillars fit together? Indeed, is one of those pillars more important than the other one? What do you think? I'd like to invite you to reflect on what you think fashion business is. In the clips that follow, four members of the Fashion Business School are going to present their view. And I'll be back at the end to sum up. First up is James Clark. He's the course leader of our executive MBA programme. Next is Hannah Middleton, who is knowledge exchange lead for our school, followed by Stina Hedegaard, who is our subject leader for sustainable management. And last, but by very much no means least, is Richard McLomer, who is one of our lecturers in fashion management. The Fashion Business School articulates that its four pillars that guide everything that it does within its role as a business school are people, planet, profit and purpose. But what does that actually mean? And does one of those have priority over the other three? Or do a few of them have more precedence over the other ones? I don't really know, but I'll have a go at work, working it out. So, as an individual, as part of society, I have a role to play. And to enable me to undertake that role, there are certain things that I need. I need... Um, a planet that is not in distress, as we seem to have with climate change. I need a community of people around me where we can work together to create value for each other, but also for the um, planet itself. We also need to be mindful of the individual people within the fashion industry whom we rely on to help create product to distribute to potential customers. And for me, all of those things are very important because you can't have a world without any of those key, almost human intrinsic values behind them. But profit is an interesting one. And for me, it is actually the most important because if I think about the planet as my home, the home that I live in, I want it to be secure. I want it to uh, be harmonious. I want it to be lovely. I want it to be nice. I want to have nice things around me. And I can only ensure that's going to happen if I maintain my home. And we can certainly make choices as individuals about how we engage with the world, whether we live in a sustainable life, whether we, whether we travel, whether we don't. But ultimately, the infrastructure of the world requires effort, and that is joint effort from all of us. But it also requires res a resource to do it, resources. And that's where profit comes in. Because profit gives you those resources. It gives you the wealth to not only exist, but to thrive. Not only to put food on the table for yourself, but to give you the opportunity to put food on the table for others as well. So for me, when I think about the four pillars of the Fashion Business School, I do feel that perhaps profit is slightly maligned, but actually is the key route that we have to supporting the other three. People are vital within the context of fashion business. Over the years, fashion businesses have had to adapt to change in order to survive. The true spirit of entrepreneurship is empowering both people and businesses to make change happen by fostering collaboration around a new redesign and rethink culture. Fashion retailing acts as an intermediary between the manufacturers and customers. It can be defined as a process of buying clothes from the manufacturer and selling them to the customers. A process that requires a collaboration of many individuals with varying skill sets across different departments, countries and cultures. 
In recent years, the role of the customer has shifted from one of passive observance to enabled dominance. It's imperative, therefore, to understand the target consumer, to understand their behaviour and know their wants and needs. And business needs to offer value to consumers, to their people. Considering the four pillars of the Fashion Business School, people, planet, profit and purpose, I believe that people is the most important pillar for the following reasons. Firstly, a successful business is about people working collaboratively. If we look back over history, people have depended on one another for food, childcare, business, well-being. There are many roles within a fashion business, and for a business to be successful, it's a case of those roles working together. Secondly, fashion business can't survive without a target market. A successful business is adept at identifying their audience, targeting that audience and providing for their needs. Finally, at the Fashion Business School, people are central to all that we do. We encourage students to work collaboratively across year groups and across the three London College of Fashion schools. We work a lot with the industry, inviting professionals to speak and share their knowledge, organising industry placements running live industry projects. We believe that the exchange of information is vital to ensuring that our delivery is in line with what is happening within the fashion industry. It's about bringing people together. It's about sharing that information. We equip all graduates with the skills necessary to succeed in the industry. We are proud that 97% of fashion business school undergraduates or employment and or further study six months after graduating in 2019. To summarise, therefore, people is the most important pillar of the four, as people-led alliances will be the fuel that drives tomorrow's successful organisations. People are important. There is no argument against that. However, at the Fashion Business School, we also have a focus on the planet and I would argue that that is probably one of the most important uh, pillars that we have at the school and that we are focusing on in terms of our curriculum and in terms of our research. Um, the fashion industry places massive strains on the world's dwindling resources, uh, most notably on fresh water and trees. And, uh, for example, the processing of raw materials into textiles is extremely water-intensive. Some estimates show that more than half a trillion gallons of fresh water are used to dye textiles. That really makes you uh, stop and think, what is it that we're doing in this industry? Why are we producing so much? What are we doing to our planet? And how can we do it better? So we've talked a little bit about uh, extensive use of uh, natural resources in the fashion industry as one of the key reasons why I think that the planet pillar is the most important for the fashion business school. I want to uh, briefly touch upon another uh, aspect that I that are related to it, but equally as important, and one of the reasons why uh, planetary boundaries is so uh, important to address at the fashion business school. It is what the uh, European Environment Agency is calling the mother of all environmental issues, which is the level of consumption that we're seeing today and that the fashion industry is certainly contributing to. I, without a doubt, the fashion industry is meeting a demand, but they are also to a certain extent creating that demand. So underlying the fashion industry's uh, contribution to pollution and degradation of natural resources is a global trend of rapid consumption, which leads to nearly 13 million tons of textile waste annually in the US alone. This is mind blowing. So globally up to 150 billion new items of clothing are produced every year or enough for every person on earth to have 20 new garments a year. Do we really need 20 new garments a year? So this is some of the aspects that we are addressing when we are talking about uh, the planet pillar at the Fashion Business School and that we are teaching and conducting research on and certainly the one that I find to be most important because what could be more important than our planet and looking after the planet and making sure that we have a healthy planet for, um, 
future generations to live on and enjoy. One of the typical materials that the fashion industry is making use of, and that's a very good example of how we need to be mindful of the natural resources that we're making use of and try to decrease it, is uh, conventional cotton. So we have seen a shift in the fashion industry from conventional cotton to better alternatives, yet conventional cotton is still one of the most used uh, materials in the fashion industry. So a good example is a conventional t-shirt made out of traditional uh, cotton, non-organic cotton. Um, a single t-shirt made from conventional cotton requires nearly 3,000 liters of water or more than the amount an average human consumes over a three-year period. Overall, the cotton, uh, cotton is responsible for nearly 3% of global water consumption. So by making as many t-shirts as we make in the fashion industry and jeans and other cotton um, uh, products, we are contributing to 3% of global water consumption. And that is fresh water that could have been used for something else. Adding to that and looking at the challenges in a more systemic perspective is uh, the pollution impact. So the pollution impact from cotton alone is quite uh, staggering. Conventional cotton accounts for 10% of all agricultural chemicals and 25% 20 20 of all pesticides uh, used. Just think about that. So I think that makes uh, a pretty uh, solid foundation for discussing uh, planetary boundaries at the Fashion Business School and why it's so important that our students are aware of the challenges that this in industry is facing and um, discussing uh, solutions uh, to these challenges. So fashion doesn't exist in a vacuum and in short we can't do it alone. Who we collaborate with and perhaps more importantly how we collaborate speaks to who we are or who we strive to be. In the fashion business, defining purpose, the way in which we go about creating to produce meaningful stuff, shapes the way we work with people, the various communities that we are each a part of, and acknowledges the skills, knowledge, social, financial, and cultural capital that members of our communities bring to the table that enrich us all, and our planet, right? I mean, it's our only home and only by working together to do a better caretaking job takes having a shared purpose and vision that can lessen the adverse impact of some of our choices. Choices that also consider how we responsibly approach the idea of profit, that is value creation and the innovation of positive solutions and sustainable business. Therefore, I would argue that purpose is the most important element as it has to be embedded at every stage if we are to truly make beautiful, meaningful steps forward together. So what do you think? In the Fashion Business School, you will see all four pillars at work, underpinning our curriculum and driving our research. My position? Well, profit undoubtedly empowers business. The economic drive is strong to generate cash and invest in a better future. But that cash will only flow from customers when the business is operate offering true value. And people are changing their views of just what true value is. People are empowered to make choices based on their own values. And those choices might be driven by a desire for social justice or for reducing our impact on our one planetary home. Fashion is an industry of global collaboration and so all four pillars are interlinked. They have to be. But the fashion system is primed for change. And with purpose embedded at the core of what we do, we can make meaningful change. I challenge you to be part of that change.